Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another JVS movie review from the Toronto Film Festival. Again, you see the backdrop here. Yeah. It's Canada stuff. I'm shooting in my hotel room is, you know, not easy doing digital media <laughs> and doing these type of film festivals. But here we are giving you another review. And this one is for the upcoming film that I think a lot of people are looking forward to because the trailer is absolutely nuts. And that is the menu and here is a quick synopsis young couple margaret and tyler travel to a remote islands to eat at hawthorne an exclusive restaurant run by a celebrity chef who has prepared a lavish menu where the food is treated as conceptual art but his approach to the cuisine has some shocking surprises for the wealthy guests and his stars uh ralph fines as chef Anna Taylor Joy as Margaret, Nicholas Holt as Tyler. We also have Judith Light in this and John Leguizamo and is directed by Mark, Mark, I say Mark, oh, Mark, my lord, my lord. I'm not going to say your last name right. I am sorry. It is late. But he's also a great director from Succession because that's what I know him from, which is my favorite show on television. So when I saw he was directing this film, I kind of thought, this could be interesting as a film here. So, start off by saying this film, The Menu, is one of the sickest ideas humanly possible for a film. As we are introduced to the rich people as they're coming to try to go to Hawthorne's, Hawthorne to eat at this exclusive restaurant on this exclusive remote island from this chef and have this one of a kind, one one of a kind type of meal that we're told by uh, Nicholas Holt's character is about 1,500 a person. I want, it's either 1,500 or 15,000 a person. I could not pick up which one it was, but it's an extremely expensive, expensive dinner that they are all going to be going to here to this island. We kind of pick up early on that a lot of these characters are not good people, especially the rich people that they're not good people, and that is what leads into what we get out of the menu. Majority of this film takes place in the kitchen. It takes place in the kitchen, in the dining room type setting, where the chef is there with his staff as they're preparing meals for these people. I literally can't go into any more detail about that aspect of it because that's when it gets shocking, surprising, the way the meals are prepared, what he does with the meals, how it, if you've seen the trailer, if you haven't, that's why I'm not saying anything, and the consequences of the meals that take place here. This is a devilishly good type of comedic, horror-esque satire, satire. Like, it, it's satire, I'm sorry. That's the way this film portrays itself here a lot. As we see Ralph finds as he's just having so much fun in this role, giving monologue after monologue after monologue after monologue in this movie and about just everything that encompasses what we're going to get the experience that we get from, let's say the first meal they have, it's like little dollops on something of a clam with foam in it. Like we get one couple who really loves it, we get three douchebags at a table who don't know what they're eating and they just feel like they should be able to command a chef because the chef's restaurant is owned by the company that they work for. Then we get uh, Tyler Tyler, and Margaret. Tyler is a big foodie. He's someone who idolizes the chef. To him, the chef can do absolutely no wrong. And then we get in the middle, we get these two very pretentious food critics who basically tells the chef anything he does is wrong. Like, they can break down everything to prove that he's just not as good as he should be. By the second course, which, this is not a spoiler to me, so I'm going to say it. The second course, which is a bread course, served with no bread. When this happens, this movie goes off the rails as you kind of, you're, you're kind of led down to the path of what this movie is going to be. Again, he served a bread course with no bread basically with just the sauces that would go on the bread. And we see their reaction to it. And based off their reaction to it is how we get the setup for the movie. By this point, you fully understand everything. Not to mention that the initial invites that went out, they know all the guest names. They know all the guests, everything. They know everything about the guests, except for Margaret. Because Tyler was supposed to go on this trip with someone else. 
and instead him and that person are no longer together so he's going with Margaret and we get a sense from the beginning that the staff doesn't want her there including the chef telling her at one point in time you shouldn't be here again it, it leads this down this devilish path of the comedic horror sat satire that uh, death becomes sort of immediately came to my mind I, it and only in the parallels of the way the satire is done in it, not necessarily the way the story of anything of that nature. Just the way the satire is done and Death Becomes Her really reminded me of the menu. And just like that movie, the menu suffers from one thing and one thing only. It is a gag. Once that gag goes on too long, it becomes average. And that's where the movie goes downhill at, is that it just feels too long. It, it feels like maybe if we would have gotten introduced to them at this setting and then a little bit of backstory how they got to the setting and then everything else after that maybe it could have sped it up a little bit more but it, it slows it down so much that by the time you get to like the third or fourth course you kind of know what's going to happen and some of the silliness starts happening that makes these type of films fall apart a little bit and it does happen here and it does get back on track possibly in the last 20 minutes it gets back on track but that middle section is really disjointed and can really throw a lot of people off and it's, I think it's going to throw a lot of people off because that stops it from being this great great type of film with uh, Ralph Fiennes having more fun in this role than I've seen him have in a pretty long period of time but in the end it is still a pretty decent film to watch so the menu Brought to you from the Toronto Film Festival. Out of a possible 10, I'm going to give the menu a 7 out of 10. This is, movie is highly entertaining. I think you're going to laugh at it. I think you're going to be disgusted at some of the things that happen in it. I think I think it's, it's going to evoke emotions that you're not expecting to feel because at times when these people are going through the things they're going through, you're going to question why would you cheer for them to go through it. I know you are. You got to question yourself of that nature. And this movie draws those parallels, draws those questions. Again, it's about classism. A lot of this film feels to me about classism and what it means to be rich. And do you weld your status to help people? Or do you do it to hurt people? Do you think people should be beneath you? And are you overly pretentious about the things that you have and the life that you live versus holding other people down? And I think that that theme runs a lot through this movie and that's gonna be something that people connect with and that makes the comedy at times much better and it may make that, again, that middle part of the film more palatable for some people once you can remember that those are the aspects of the film that you love. This has been another JVS Movie Review. Peace, people.